going on guys welcome to another video brought to you by the simple engineer today we are going to delve into the topic of the pigeonhole principle um, which is very common among discrete mathematics uh, especially with computer science relevant topics um, so let's go ahead and get started um, for those of you who don't know this is really a powerful tool in combinatory uh, or combinatorial mathematics and it basically states that if you have three pigeons okay you have three pigeons and available are two different boxes then is it possible to put all three pigeons in these two boxes and the answer is yes but there's a slight condition and that's that one box must contain at least two pigeons Okay, so I put one pigeon here, but this box has to contain these two pigeons, okay? So it's a very, very trivial idea. It's not, it's not hard to understand, but there's different ideas underlying this um, topic that make it a little more non-trivial. So another kind of, kind of basic example is among three people. So let's say we have three people at a party okay there's only two types of genders male and female so we're saying that at least two of these people must be the same gender okay so another very very simple idea because you can't have three people all being different genders because there's only two possible genders okay so now let's kind of delve into how to solve these types of problems what kind of formulas are presented to us under certain circumstances okay so it really says that if n pigeons are in m boxes okay so you have n pigeons n pigeons in m boxes such that n is greater than m then at least two pigeons reside in the same box okay and this follows a very basic idea that whatever your desired outcome is equals the ceiling function of in pigeons over m boxes okay so the ceiling function basically states that if I have any number, say 2.0001 or 3.5, the ceiling of 3.5 would round to 4, and the ceiling of 2.0001 would round to 3, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea that it rounds up, okay, from whatever the number is. However, if I just had the ceiling of two, this equals two because there is no number that's even slightly higher than two, so it just stays at itself. Okay, so that's what the ceiling says. So if I have the ceiling of three pigeons, but I only have two boxes, well, what's the ceiling of three over two? This is 1.5 and the ceiling of 1.5 equals 2. So it's saying that I have to have at least two boxes okay, present for this to hold true. Okay, so now let's get into some actual examples. So I'll go ahead and erase this definition. And we will uh, once again place these equations. So I initially said that R equals the ceiling of N over K, okay, um, where, well, recently, well, previously we used M, okay, M boxes, but now we're going to use just a, a generalized formula so we can um, keep this universal here. So R, I like to think of as the, whatever the desired output is. So this is going to be our desired output, if you will. And then N equals the number of items, number of items. And we are going to say the number of items is metaphorically these pigeons. And we'll say K equals the number of um, 
spaces, which would technically be the boxes or the pigeonholes that these things can be placed in. And keep in mind that this formula here is the same mathematically represented as n equals r minus one times k plus one. These things mean the same thing. So when you have certain variables that are unknown or hard to find, then you can use this characteristical equation, characteristic equation, and it'll give you certain variables that you could not otherwise find using this, okay? So keep these in mind. You have equation number one here and equation number two here. And you'll probably wanna write these down um, for some of the examples that we are going to do in this video. Okay, I'll actually go and erase all of this. So let's do a, a couple examples. We'll start with a more trivial idea. So say we have for every, for every 27 word sequence in a book, 27 words in a book, at least two words begin with the same letter. At least two words begin with the same letter. Okay, and we wanna prove that this is true. Okay, so um, we'll kind of revert back to our idea that um, the number of pigeons which is represented by our n value, the number of pigeons is equal to the 27 words. And then if we're using the same metaphor, the number of boxes we have, which we denoted by k, is equal to the 26 letter combinations that we can have from the letters in the alphabet. So our desired output, I like to think of R as whatever our desired output is, is equal to the equation that we use as R equals the ceiling of N over K, which is equal to the ceiling of 27 over two, which indeed equals two. So we proved that at least two words begin with the same letter by solving this equation. You see two equals two and therefore the proof is satisfied. Okay, so that was a more, that was a trivial example, not, not too hard to understand, basic proof. Um, so now we'll look at something that's, that's a, little, a little harder to grasp, and this is our bowl example. So we have a bowl, and this bowl contains, this bowl contains six red balls, and it contains six blue balls, okay? And a woman is selecting these balls blindfolded. She's selecting these balls blindfolded, and we wanna know what is the minimum, what is the minimum balls to select for at least three blue balls, at least three balls. Okay, so you want at least three blue balls. And something to consider in the pigeonhole principle is you always consider the worst case scenario. So if the minimum balls to select for at least three balls to for sure have, for sure have, then we need to select nine balls. And that's because worst case scenario, we could select all six red balls, which was which would put us at count six. However, we want three balls of that are blue. So once we exceed the six count, then all we have left to select are the blue balls and we want three of them. So we would just do six plus three and that's how we get nine, okay? So once again, not too bad, but now let's, let's go ahead and do something a little trickier. So we have the same set here, but B is saying the min men to have three of the same color. Okay, so it's a little different because you could have either three of the red or three of the blue. 
So we can actually go back to our equation to help us solve this. And we said that our equation was n equals r minus 1 multiplied by k plus 1. Okay, so like I said, I like to think of r as the desired output, k as the number of boxes, and n as the possible, like the pigeons in the situation. So the minimum number, which would be technically the pigeons, n equals r, so the desired output, which is given to us as 3. So we could go 3 minus 1 times. And then the number of boxes that we have, which is 2, because we have two different types of colors. We can either have red or blue, which would be the two different types of boxes, if you will. So we have two different types of colors or categories plus 1. And this is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 1 equals 5. Okay, so we have five different um, draws that we have to do to ensure three of the same color. Okay, so quickly moving along so we can get through all of these examples. We are going to go ahead and do something that we call bit strings or utilize the idea of bit strings. So we have four different types of bit strings. And for those of you who don't know what a bit is, it's basically a sequence of numbers that are either zero or one, okay? So we have a bit string um, of zero, and it follows this structure, okay? So we can have two zeros on the end, and we don't care the if zeros or ones are in the middle. We can have a zero in the beginning, don't care what's in the middle, but we have a one at the end. We can have a one at the beginning, don't care what's in the middle, and a zero at the end. Or we can have a one in the beginning, don't care what's in the middle, and a one at the end. So we have these four different types of structures, okay? Four types. And they consist of five different numbers. And they wanna know how many bit strings, how many bit strings to select five of the same type. Okay, so we want five of the same type. So keep in mind, I always like to refer back to this equation, how I think of these types of problems. So we want five of the same type, which would be our desired output. So in the equation, we would say r equals five, because that's the desired output. And then the different types of boxes are possible possible places that we can put this is four, okay? Because we have four different types, so we can have four different types of these bit strings. So k is equal to four. Now we don't know the number of pigeons or the amount of bit strings to select five of the same type, so that would be n equals and then our unknown. So we could follow the formula n equals r minus one times k plus one, and then we would just plug this in, r equals five minus one times four plus one, and that would equal 17, okay? So 17 is the number of bit strings to select to have five of the same type. Okay, now let's move on to our next, next example. Okay, so our next example says that we can have three, okay, so we have three letter words printed and they cannot repeat. So a computer is printing out these three letter words and none of these letters can repeat. And it wants to know how many words to print to ensure that eight of these words that are being printed out are identical, okay? So we have three letter words and they can't repeat. So we're gonna actually figure out like how many three letter words there exist that cannot repeat. We would just say, okay, we have three spaces. They're all letters and they can't repeat. So the first letter could be any of the 26 letters in the alphabet. Then the second letter would have to be 25 letters because it can't intersect with the first letter. And then 24 letters for the third one. And we would just multiply these out and if we multiply these out, we would get 26 times 25 times 24, which equals 15,600 possible combinations um, for three-letter words that cannot repeat. 
in the English alphabet. Now, how many uh, of these three letter words do we need to print to ensure eight of these are identical? Eight of them are identical. So let's go ahead and look at our equation. We have n equals r minus one times k plus one. Okay, well, r is our desired output. We want eight, okay, identical numbers. And this is our desired output. And then k is our amount of boxes, spaces, or categories that we have. And we have 15,600 different options or spaces or pigeonholes, if you will. Now, the only unknown here is the necessary um, amount to print the eight are identical. So this is our unknown. So we could just go n equals eight minus one times 15,600 plus one. Okay, and that's seven times 15,600, which is 109,200 plus one. So we have 109,201, and that is our answer. It's very simple, it follows this nice structure, and it's not too hard to understand once you kind of get the grasp of utilizing the formula. And okay, guys, well, that covers up my tutorial for the pigeonhole principle. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help you. You can comment on the video or send me a message, and I hope to see you in my next video.